Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kim Day, and I'm the manager of the Teen Center at the Enoch Pratt Free Library Central Branch in downtown Baltimore. Um, I'm excited to be here to talk to you today about teen advocacy, and um, that would be advocating for teens in the library is actually what I should call this. Um, so let's get started. And so after this recorded session, of course, you'll have a live session. And at our live session meeting, we'll be doing a lot of talking about uh, what you learn in this recording and also in your pre-work for this session. Okay, so let me see if I can get this to work. Uh, so why advocate for teens in the library? And what do we mean when we talk about advocacy for teens? Well, working with teens can be one of the loneliest and most frustrating jobs in public libraries because this group is not typically well supported or tolerated in public libraries outside of the teen services department, if you even have a department. Um, teen services staff often find themselves advocating multiple times a day for things like the teen collection, teen programming, spaces in the library, proper customer service to teens, and more. Most of what we do on the front lines of teen services is advocate for teens rights to use the library. But no matter what your role is in your library job and where in the library, customers of all ages have a right to use our, our resources, and that includes the teens. And of course, teens do need spaces of their own. As we know, they are still in the developmental stage, and so their behavior often looks different than what other adults expect of them, which is why giving teens a space of their own is a worthy and important endeavor especially because it gives them a little ownership of the library space where they can feel comfortable being themselves. These are some examples of teen-only spaces in libraries around the country. And to get inspired and find in-depth tips, I highly suggest looking at YALSA's Speaking Up for Library Services to Teens, a guide for advocacy. It's freely available online. And just to go over some of the spaces you see here, um, the top left is the teen space that I manage. That's just um, kind of like a small view of it. There's much more to it than that. But that is what we call the reading room. And to give you an example, um, it's an amazing space. It's gigantic. It takes up an entire wing of the second floor of our downtown library. Um, it includes a maker space and a recording studio and all that fun stuff. But as you can see, um, the reading room as it's set up here is not exactly how I would have chosen to set it up. Um, the renovation of the downtown library was an extensive endeavor. It made the news. Um, it's a really gorgeous space. But the one thing about the space is it, it tends to be a little overwhelming um, for the teens and a little bit too formal. So we've had to think of ways to just rearrange the furniture, add more comfortable furniture, um, and just in general make the space a little less of a ballroom type feel to it and a little more of a, um, a welcoming teen space for them to be in. We also have um, at the top right um, the mix teen space at the downtown library of the San Francisco Public Library and this is um, it's a very like multimedia, they have pretty much everything in the space um, and it circles around um, the center information desk. Only teens are allowed in there. Um, adults can't even come in and browse the collection. So if they are looking for something, they need to ask the staff um, by the front door and the staff will get it for them. They cannot enter the space. And then there are some examples um, down below there's a recording space, which is really great for teens to have. There's some examples of, you know, comfortable seating um, set around in a welcoming um, circular type space. Using bright colors is really important for teens as well. So here's just some examples for you. 
And when we think about advocating for teens, um, we need to think about who we're advocating for and who we're doing that advocating to. Um, so there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, and the first thing that you, you might wanna make a priority is um, advocating to staff and leadership. As mentioned before, not every staff member wants to deal with teens and administrators and leadership may not want to be directly, um, they may not want to direct funding to teen services in the library for whatever reasons. Whenever possible, you should advocate for teens being in the library. They're the future possible funders and users of our libraries. We can assist them in getting the services they need, whatever those may be, so they, so that they can grow into the adults who support the libraries and, and, and in our, our communities. And not the least of reasons, but simply because they have as much of a right as any other member of the community to be in the library. So some places to start with this are um, talk to your managers about possibly having a staff training on teen customer service. You can um, do a passive um, maneuver like sending random staff emails with articles or blog posts about things teens are doing in the world and things libraries are doing for and with teens out to staff. Keep the information positive, upbeat, and light. Uh, you want to model the behavior you'd like to see, not just to teens, but to other staff members. This includes offering to help other staff whenever possible uh, when they're handling situations that are involving teens. And then, of course, other customers. And this is where that empathy is heavily needed. You'll often feel caught in the middle of teen behaviors in the library and customer complaints. It's best to be proactive and foresee these situations rather than reactive whenever you can. Um, so do you have a dedicated teen space or area? And if so, what are the reasonable expectation guidelines for noise levels and behavior in that space? If you don't have a space just for teens, what are those expectations in general for the whole library, not just for teens, but for everybody? Is the complaint an unreasonable expectation of the teens? Often adults see the teens as young adults because they, they kind of are, but that comes with the expectation of them to act in a more mature way. And we know that this just isn't always possible with teens. You'll need to have a conversation about what the library's reasonable expectations are uh, for example, talking and working in groups is allowed as long as they're not screaming or running around, etc. If so, it helps to have a brief handout readily available to hand to customers who don't really want to have a conversation about it, but want to voice their complaint and just leave um, and maybe not come back, which you can't really do anything about. Um, if that's how they wanted to handle the situation, but it does help if you have a little handout, um, and I've used half sheet sizes before, to, that includes specific reasons why you are um, allowing teens to have their own space, for example, and why it's okay that they're kind of loud in that space, and what are the reasonable expectations that we have of teens um, and other customers in the library. And you can even say why teens act the way they do um, and why that's okay and it's allowed in this space in the library. So we're also advocating for and to the teens for programs, policies, and just getting more teens in the door. This is where you'll most use your customer service skills and build relationships with the teens so they act as free um, PR. Uh, the word of mouth to their friends is gold, and that is the easiest way to get teens in the door um, and knowing about the expectations when they're in the library. So um, also to community partners, of course, including the schools, especially um, your school librarian or library media specialists and teachers financial stakeholders and potential funders, um, both internal and external, and any um, government officials like city council, um, you can go present what 
your teen groups or, are doing um, to the city council meetings or bring your teen advisory board to talk about what they're planning. Uh, city council and local community members love to see that. Some overall tips for general advocacy. Um, these are taken directly from the YALSA's Speaking Up for Library Services to Teens, a guide to advocacy. But I just wanted to highlight them here. You wanna start with a plan, have a clear goal for what you wanna achieve, whether it's a teen space, behavior guidelines, computer use policies, whatever it may be. Uh, you wanna use clear, consistent messaging, be prepared with talking points, those little half sheets I was talking about. Make it easy for others to support you. Link your goal to the library's strategic plan or community needs. Keep the key people in the loop, basically. Um, get teens involved. When teens feel a sense of ownership, they support the library more. A teen advisory group is the best way to do this. Talk to them about advocacy and why it's important in a democracy. Let them come up with their own ideas. And then get out there and do outreach if you aren't already. I mean, of course, um, when COVID's over, it's a lot easier, but we can still do it online. Attend city council, as I mentioned before, and school board meetings are another way to do that. Partner with other orgs in town serving teens. A great way to get the word out about teen services at the library is, again, by word of mouth and just talking to people. Keep teen services visible. So marketing through the schools, social media, um, your library should have a social media account focused on teens if you're trying to market your services to them. Teens generally are not going to look at um, your library's Facebook page um, or any Facebook page really anymore. So um, having that social media account is key. And I'm sorry about the um, my logo moved, um, but what that says on the bottom is be persistent, celebrate your successes and learn from your mistakes, of course, and, but keep moving forward. Um, don't give up, you will hit a wall um, when it comes to advocating for teens or even just um, doing outreach for them. But if you give up, um, that's where your teen services die. So you just can't give up. Um, and repeat all of the things above. So it's kind of never ending when it comes to um, general advocacy, especially when, when your job is to um, work with teens. So that is the general overview of advocating for teens. And again, as I mentioned before, when we meet in person, we'll do, we'll have a lot of discussion time um, and we will talk about things that are brought up in your pre-work. Um, we will also do sort of a mini fail camp and that what has worked and hasn't worked um, when you've tried advocating for teens in your library. So think about these things before the live session and I look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you.